Welcome to lesson number two. In this lesson, we are going to explore the different fields that Zooforms has to offer. In order to begin, let's go to the home icon, let's click on Forms, and we are going to click on New Form. Let's give the form a name and click on Create. The first field that we are going to explore will be the single line. The single line will usually be used for first name, last name, company name, short amount of text. It's limited to 255 characters. Second field will be the multi-line. The multi-line is a big amount of text of about 65,000 characters and it will be used for description, reason of contact us and things like that. We are going to use this field whenever we need lots of text as a response to the question. Next, we will have the number field. The number field, as you can understand, it's a number field without the decimal, which means 1000. Next, we will have the decimal. Decimal will be the same like the number field, but it will have a decimal. For example, 1000 dot 50 okay 1050 cents as an example next we are going to have the name field the name field is exactly like the single field but it will involve two single lines if i will drag and drop the name field you will see that you will have for the first name you will have a single line the same way that we have here on the top and it will also have a last name which is also a single line Zo created us the name field just to save us time and also it looks much better visually because both fields are one beside the other. Next we will have the address field. The address field is a big collection of lots of single lines. As you can see you have the street address, address line number two, city, state, postal code, all those will be single lines. The only difference is that country will be a drop-down and the drop-down will be able to select from multiple variables and we will touch that later. But for now, I just want you to understand that the address field is a combination of multiple single lines plus a drop-down list. Next, we are going to check the phone field. The phone field is like a single line the only difference it will accept only four numbers and as you can see here you can also create the format that you like the phone to be input into your system it's very very convenient when you want to get real phone numbers and zo will validate that the information that got entered into the phone field is a real phone number next we have the email field the email field is the same like the single line. The only difference, the system will validate that this is an email, which means it will have some text, then the at sign, another text, dot, and some text, which means it will try to validate if the information that got entered into this field is a real email address. Next, we are going to play with the date field. As you can understand, the date field is just a date. From the other side, you also have the time field and the time field will be a time. So if, for example, you want to have the exact date and time, you will probably want to use something like date time. In those examples, you will have the date for a specific date or time for a specific time. Next, we are going to play with the drop down. The drop down field will have a name, and the name will be, let's say, categories. And here you will have the different choices. Okay, category three, and so on. If you need more categories, you will just click on the plus button and that will give you the option for more. Next, we are going with the radio option. 
the radio option is exactly like the drop down it will just look visually in a different way for example i will have here car types and i will have here the different car types I will have only two of them and I will click on save. And now let's access the form and see what we got so far. We have the single line, we have the multi line, which is multiple records, we have the number field, we have the decimal, we have the first name and last name, we have here the address, we have the phone number. We have the email address, a date field, the time field, categories in a drop down, and car types with radio buttons. That's what we got so far. Let's go back and proceed with the different options. Next, we have the multiple choices. The multiple choices will be the same idea like the drop down, but you can choose more than one. Okay, that will be sugar types, and we have here candy and the bubble gum. If I will click on save. And I will refresh the form. You can see here that I can select one or both of them. If I will need to select both of them, I will need to click on the keyboard on the control key. And then I will click on the mouse in the same time. That will allow me to select more than one option. Let's go back to the form. Next, we are going with the checkbox. The checkbox is exactly the same thing like the radio or the drop down, but it will allow us to select multiple values. Let's say real estate app types, we have your condo, we have house and we have townhouse. If I will check how it looks like, you can see that I can have more than one option. The reason to use the checkbox and not the multi select is just because the ease of use. You don't need to tell people that they can select more than one. It's just intuitive. You just click on it. While here in the multi select, you will need to click on the control and then on the mouse, which means older people will usually don't know how to do it. So you're missing them. So I will always go with the checkbox option and not with the multi line. Let's go back to the form and let's continue. Next, we will have the decision box. The decision box, as you can see here, is just a check mark. agree to terms of use and if someone is clicking the checkbox basically he agree that's the decision box next we have the date time i will put it here as i told you before if you need to have a date time in one field you will select this option let's see how it works if i go here and i have the date time I will select the date and below I can select the time. Okay. Let's go back to the form. Now we have another option. It's the website. The website is exactly like the single line. The only difference is that Zoe will enforce the correct website name. And the website name will be few characters dot and few characters 
for example, google.com. Next, we are going with the currency field. The currency field is a number field, but it will also have a currency attached to it. As you can see, I have different currencies. If I will check Indian rupees, you will see here that the currency will be INR. Okay, in our case, we'll go with US dollars and you will see USD beside the currency value. The next option will be the file upload. The file upload will allow the user to upload files. There are a few important settings for this option. One, I can select the file types. For example, I will allow only PDF or doc documents. And I can also select what will be the maximum amount of files that the customer can upload. For example, I allow my client to upload up to five documents. Each one of them will be 20 megabyte each maximum. So that's the maximum limit. Image upload will be exactly the same as file upload. The only difference, it will limit the files to JPEG, PNG, or a GIF. Those will be the options. As you can see here, you can have more options. Usually people will upload PNG, GIF, or JPEG, okay? But from here, you can deselect the options that you don't want to accept. As you can see, you can also limit the number of files that you are going to accept, the number of pictures. Next, we will have the section and the page break. I'm not going to deal with them now. We are going to touch them later. Next, we will have the payment option. This is an incredible option that's being used a lot. Let's say that I am selling on my website a Zo CRM setup package. The package will be 900 bucks and I will send a form to a prospect. The form will have all the information that I need to receive in order to proceed with the order. And at the end of the form, I will have the payment option, which means I will ask the client to pay me 900 bucks. If the client is not serious enough and is not paying the 900, I will not even get the form which means this is not a serious request and I don't need to waste my time. If the client did pay the money, I will receive the form plus the payment, okay? So I will have here, for example, the name will be payment. There will be a fixed price. The account name, let's say I will go with Stripe, okay? I will enter the Stripe integration I will have here the currency, I will have the amount, which is 900 bucks, and then whenever I will integrate my Stripe or PayPal, it doesn't really matter, then I will click on done, and then it will be added to the system. Of course, on this test, I am not going to integrate my real payment processing gateway, but just know that you can have here uh, integration with PayPal, Stripe, to check out uh, Razorpay or Authorize.net. Now, Authorize.net is integrating with multiple credit card processing companies. So, Authorize.net really means many different processing gateways. Next, we will go with the matrix. The matrix choice, it will be something like that. So you can select, for example, if you want the, the matrix to be with radio buttons, check boxes or drop downs. Most of them will be almost the same. Let's go with the check boxes as an example. I will click on done. And now I need to select the questions and the answers. If I will just use it as is, and I will refresh, you will see that it looks like a small table. I will have here a question and the client can select what kind of answer. Now, 
you can save second question, third question, and you can have many of them. What's important to understand is when I'm selecting the matrix, the radio button will be just one selection. So let's see how it looks like. The radio button will be one selection. When the checkbox can, can be multiple selections. And the third one, where is it? Let's grab it. The third one will be drop down. I can have multiple values for each selection. Let's refresh the page. And you can see here, I can have for each one of the answers, multiple selections. Next, we will have the ZOS CRM. I'm not going to deal with it now. We'll deal with it in the integration part close to the end of the course. You have also the slider. The slider is a, is a way to select a value in a nice, in a nice way. So if I will click here on save and we'll go and display it, you can see that I can play with the slider. You see, so basically let's say I was our service. So your service was 100 or your service was 89. So you can play with the slider. It's very nice uh, visually and it's more inter interactive. Next, you will have the ratings. The ratings, as you can understand, will be stars. You can say how many stars. So let's assume you have 10 stars. And then if I will refresh, you can see that I can select the number of stars, okay? Which is also interactive the same way like the slider. It's very cool. You have the description option. The description option is just a way to provide more information. So let's say that I have a section that I'm asking the client to do something. Okay, please select uh, from one star and all the way to 10 stars. And when I will click on save, you can see that I have this field and that can be an explanation what to do with the stars rating which means this is only explanation it's not a field that i'm receiving information from you see okay let's proceed next we have the signature extremely extremely valuable if you will look up if you go here and you refresh Let's assume that we have the ZO CRM setup form. I'm collecting the payment and then I'm writing here, please sign here to authorize the transaction and the customer is, is signing. So it's a great way also to get your payment and also to get a signature for the payment, right? Next, we have a formula. We're not going to deal with formula right now. And not only that, image choices and sub form. Yeah. Let's deal only with, with the, the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions, as you can see here, you have the headline terms and conditions. And here you can have actually the terms and conditions. And eventually the client need to accept them. So it's like a combination of description and decision. Let me just show you how it looks like. So it's something like that. You have here the terms and conditions and eventually a decision box. Okay. So that's it. That's, that's what we have in the basic and advanced options. Later on, I will show you uh, the, the rest of them. I just don't want to put too much pressure on you. In lesson number three, I will show you the different options that you have on the different fields. And I will also also show you the section page break and I will show you the fields that I did not show you in this lesson. Thank you very much for watching. I will bombard you with more information in lesson number three.